I'm Doug Mulford. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our pitch reel. This is basically a condensed version of the show to give you an idea of what we're trying to do. It's a location-based show that showcases beer tourism all over the country. Uh, we get to talk to some really amazing people, see some amazing sights, and drink some really amazing beer. Hi, I'm Doug. I've spent over 15 years in the beer industry. I've been a brewer, a sales rep, but most of all, I'm a serious beer nerd. Beer is my passion, and I'm traveling all across this country to explore different beer cultures. And what better way to do that than hanging out with the people that make it, sell it, and drink it. Today we're in Charleston, South Carolina, the holy city. With beautiful beaches, stunning architecture, and historic charm, you can see why this town was voted the number one tourist destination in the country. The last decade has seen Charleston grow into a culinary destination. And recently, the breweries here are making this a hotbed for beer tourism. Delicious food and amazing beer, I'm all in. There's a number of different topics that we cover on Beer Run. First up, we went to Westbrook Brewing Company to talk about hype. In today's beer market, you're seeing more and more people line up for these limited release, you can't have this, get in line beers. Westbrook, people flock to from all over the world to wait in line for six or seven hours just to take home one bottle of this special beer. We put their liquid to the test to see if it was worth the hype. We can really be credited for bringing the beer tourism industry here to Charleston. Because we have the distinction of the awards and the notoriety that goes with a top 100 brewery in the United States, we see people coming from all over the world specifically to come here to Charleston to come to this brewery. In every city we go to, we're going to meet up with a master brewer to brew something specific to that region. In our next segment, we go to Common House Ale Works to brew with Shane, master brewer extraordinaire, and drink some beers with Hank, owner of Common House Ale Works. I mean, seriously, I'm already getting calls from friends up north saying, dude, can you get me Common House? Cheers, Cheers buddy. Thank you again. Talking about gravity and beer, we're looking at it as a density compared to water. Now, is this the octopus or the octahop? I tell people a lot of times that brewing is like alchemy. It's science and art. And we are literally taking grain and making it into liquid gold. Every city we go to, we want to meet up with a local expert. Here in Charleston, we met up with Jeff Miller, barbecue pit master and local food writer. He brought me around to some really amazing places. In this next segment, we check out Edmund's Oast Exchange, voted the number one bottle shop in the world. Today, we're meeting up with my good friend and Charleston local, Jeff Miller, at Kudu Craft Beer and Coffee.
Jeff is a barbecue pit master, local food writer, and fellow beer nerd. As you'll soon find out, I like hanging out with people that drink as much craft beer as I do, and Jeff is no slouch. He's lined up a couple places today that he says I absolutely have to see. Well, there's something I want to show you that I think you're really going to like. Yeah? Yeah, we have. Sweet, man. I'm excited. Edmund's Oast Exchange. Right. Uh, it's actually one of the best bottle shops in the world. Bottle shop? Bottle shop. I'll see you later. Oh. <laughs> Now, I could spend days in a good bottle shop, and I think because Jeff knows me so well, he's gone off to talk to Chef Bob next door. While I talked to Brandon Plyler, Advanced Cicerone, said once he wants to see people getting excited about beer that goes well with food, yep. and not yep. just beer that tastes like food, that's meant to mimic food. Today, I think we're gonna go a little bit on the different side. We're gonna probably do some fried tripe, uh, some beef, beef tongue, grilled octopus. We wanna make some stuff that's fun, it's the diner kind of guessing, and it's all about the experience. What do we got here? So this is Field of Fingers. It's an imperial stout, part of which has been aged in oak barrels with Britannomyces, which is a wild yeast. Uh, and we blended that in with a braggot, which is a very strong uh, honey and yeah. barley-based like beer. A honey wine yeah, mixed it's... with a barrel-aged stout with Britannomyces? That's exactly what that is. Oh my god. Pretty crazy. That was uh, produced in the brew pub, uh, which is in the restaurant right next door. Hey everybody. Uh, I'm joined today by Scott Shore, Chrissy Kohler, and Brooke Bristow. Um, Scott is the owner of Edmund's Oast. Scott, thank you so much for having us today. It's our uh, pleasure. Thanks yeah. for being here. Most Charlestonians would tell you that you have to try. You have yeah. to try shrimp and grits, and you got to get some sheet crab soup. A lot of our culinary history uh, goes back to the Gullah Geechee. So you're talking about that influence. You get that in the shrimp and grits. Um, yeah. You know, so that's that's kind of where we get a lot of our influences from, especially when you think of those traditional Charleston dishes. For the sake of TV, we're going to do a uh, team beer run versus team Edmonds Oast to see who can do better food pairings with beer and cocktails. So it's gonna be myself versus your head bartender slash manager, Jace. I'm excited to see what you guys think. So awesome, here we go. I really like how the hoppiness of the IPA sort of cuts through the fattiness and richness of the fried food. It scrubs the palate a little bit, gives a sort of cleaning, refreshing effect. It's, it's really nice. I would say with the cocktail, it actually really emphasizes flavor more. The sort of citrusy and herbaceous nature of the flavors of the cocktail really sort of bolster the overall profile of the, of the dish. I agree. I think the cocktail like picks up in some of that batter. Some of the spices in that batter really kind of brings that pepperiness out a little bit more. I actually find all of them to be in harmony here. There's kind of a yin and yang between both of these and then the elements of the dish. I mean, obviously the, you know, but as I drill down into the bottom of the dish and I get some of those more spicy, zingy flavors, I find that they kind of the, the Asian ingredients in the cocktail go really well with that, that spiciness at the bottom. So. It all kind of just comes together for me together versus just an individual beer. I completely agree. I think what we're all unanimously saying is that to properly enjoy this dish, you need a beer and a cocktail together. Cheers to that. <laughs> now this show isn't just about the niche neck beard conversations that you have with the 1% of craft brewers. It's about all beer. And in this next segment, we celebrated PBR week at the Recovery Room, number one Pabst Blue Ribbon account in the world. Julian, thank you so much for being here, and yeah, you got it. I'm, I'm so thrilled that we could do PBR at the Rec Room. So uh, for those of you that don't know, the Rec Room is the number one uh, account for PBR in the world. Is that? 12 ounce cans, yeah. For 12 ounce cans, so these right here. Um, where did the blue ribbon come from? So in 1893, at the Chicago World's Fair, uh, Pabst 
uh, beer won a uh, gold won, medal. And won the gold, so yeah. hence the blue ribbon? Yeah, so part of their marketing strategy was to tie silk blue ribbons on the top of uh, bottles. Um, something that's unique to Charleston is the Dirty Southeast Music Festival that I started when I started with PAPS. Dirty Southeast. Dirty Southeast Music like Festival. I'm ready for another beer. Me too. Yeah. What's up, man? What's up? Can you join us for a minute? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Um, I think the liquid speaks for itself. Um, yeah. It's a good beer. We just won the 2018 silver medal for American Lager. Yeah, that's right. In LA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. We get to meet up with PBR rep Jillian and bar manager Mark to have some conversations that you might not get to have anywhere else. Grab can PBR, sit down and look around, and it'll be the only place in Charleston that you will see a guy in a pastel polo shirt, talking to a guy with as many tattoos as me, <laughs> talking to a girl that's in an evening dress. Every walk like, of life. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you one of the things that I love about this place is you can walk in here uh, and buy the bar around and be a hero for 20 bucks. Oh yeah, you come, you come in for a happy hour and you're good to go. You can, yeah. you can be that guy and, and yeah. everyone has that dream of walking in. Yeah, like, Let's get the bar around. Yeah. 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 All the way around, all the way around. This next clip is for a true beer aficionado. We go to Charlestown Fermentary in what I like to think of as our Brewer's Corner segment. If you're a beer geek, it's sure to get your juices flowing. So, thanks for joining me today on Beer Run. Uh, we are here at Charlestown Fermentary. Uh, you are the owner slash head brewer. Um, what are we drinking today? Well, today I'm drinking uh, our Mudlark Dry Stout, and you have our Covercraft IPA. Covercraft IPA. It looks like orange juice. Well, cheers, bud. Cheers. Did you add guava pineapple no, to this? No, no, yeah. no. That's all hops. That's all from the hops? Mm-hmm. The, the nose on this. I wish you guys at home could smell this because it's ridiculously tasty smelling. It, I want to live in a world where when you walk outside, the atmosphere smells <laughs> like this beer does. Well, a lot of people probably don't know this, but uh, you were the former brewer at Trillium, mm -hmm. which is uh, in Massachusetts, yep. Boston, uh, a brewery that us beer nerds are, has, you know, is Mecca, right? I mean, it's one of the cool kids, awesome breweries, uh, putting out some really delicious stuff. Yep. And a lot of that is thanks to you. I mean, some of your recipe development and, um, Moved down here, started Charlestown Fermentary. Uh, you guys just recently won best best new brewery in South Carolina. Yeah. It's the great equalizer. It is. It'll, it'll put the CEO it next to the gender. Yes. And they'll and they'll have a conversation. Dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we definitely wanted. Uh, you know, we were focusing right off the right off the bat on having you know a uh, an on premise, uh, I guess, environment. You know, something. Where people come in and have a have a couple pints, meet their neighbors after work. You know? So that's an important part of, of our of our model. Which yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's an awesome community. I mean, between brewers is is, is great. Um, it's all that's all part of you know brewing different styles. That's I think part of why these uh, these types of IPAs are really appealing uh, is because they're approachable. Um, you know, and we have. 99% of the time we're able to find a beer that we make for almost everyone. Sure. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, that's why we make beer. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this preliminary presentation of Beer Run. To view a full episode or to continue the conversation, please contact us by phone or email, and we look forward to hearing from you. Cheers. Cheers.